Hi there. Now, before we start on the last part of this question, just to recap, we were given the points A had coordinates minus 1, 6, and the point B has coordinates 7, 2. And in the first part, we had to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB, giving your answer in the form y equals mx plus c. And the answer to that was y equals 2x minus 2. Now, for this part of the question, we're told that a point C then on the perpendicular bisector has coordinates PQ. The distance OC is two units where O is the origin. And we've got to write down two equations involving P and Q and hence find the coordinates of the possible positions of C for five marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then, if you had a go. Well, the answer, in fact, was that the coordinates of C are 0, minus 2, or C is 8 fifths, 6 fifths. So if you didn't get this, what I'll do is I'll show you how I went about it. So we've got our sketch then of the line y equals 2x minus 2. And we've got this point C that is on it with coordinates PQ. So I'm going to just say that this here is the point C. So we'll mark that in as C, having coordinates P and Q. And the distance from O to C is going to be two units. Now this is clearly not the only position that P and Q could be in. There's going to be another point, say, further down here where that distance is also going to be two units. So what are the equations that we could set up? Well, we know that when x is p, y is q, and it lies on the line, so it must satisfy this equation. So let's just put that down, that uh, we know that when x equals p, y must equal q. So therefore, the equation that we get is that q must equal 2p minus 2. So therefore, q equals 2p minus 2. And let's just say we call that equation 1. Well, we need another equation. And so where do we get that equation from? Well, it's essentially using Pythagoras' theorem. We know that the length, I'll just write here also that OC, we know that the length OC equals two units. And so if I was to square this length and think of a triangle like this, okay, down here and across there, then we've got that two squared, OC squared, must equal this length squared, which is P squared, plus this length, which is Q, and we square that, that'd be q squared. So we've got, therefore, oc squared, which would equal 4, gives us that p squared plus q squared, the sum of the squares of these two shorter sides, must equal oc squared, which is 4. OK? And that's my second equation, number it 2. So we should be able to now solve these two equations and find out what P and Q were. So let's say we substitute equation 1 into equation 2. So we'll just write that down here. Sub equation 1 into equation 2. And if we do that, we've therefore got the P squared. So therefore P squared plus, and instead of Q, we've got now 2P minus 2, and that's all squared, and that should equal the 4. So if we now square out the bracket, we've got 2p all squared, which is going to be 4p squared. We get twice the product of these two terms. The product is minus 4p, so if we double that, that's going to be minus 8p. And then we square the last term in the bracket, so minus 2 all squared is plus 4. And that's going to equal 4. And grouping up my p squared terms, we're going to have 5p squared. And then we've got minus 8p. 
And then if I subtract 4 from both sides, then I just get equals 0. So with this quadratic equation, we can now factorize it. And so if we pull out p as a common factor, we've got p bracket 5p minus 8, and that will equal 0. So therefore, each of these factors could be equal to 0, so therefore p could equal 0, or the other factor, 5p minus 8, that could equal 0. So we've got then p equals 0, and from this one, if we add 8 to both sides, 5p would equal 8, then divide both sides by 5, and you'll get p equaling 8 fifths. So we've got two values then for p, and we can find the corresponding values for q by substituting these values into equation 1. So if I just say here sub in equation 1, we can see that therefore when p equals 0, when p equals 0, we get that q would equal just simply minus 2. So q equals minus 2. And then when we have p equaling 8 fifths, we substitute this in to 1. We're going to get 2 times 8 fifths. Let's just write that down. 2 times 8 fifths. And then minus 2. And that gives us 6 fifths. So therefore, in summary, our coordinates for c will be 0 minus 2. 0 minus 2 or C is going to be at the point where its X coordinate is 8 fifths and its Y coordinate is 6 fifths. Okay, it's interesting to see that C being 0 minus 2 is this point down here. Really we should have seen that coming because when it's in the form Y equals MX plus C, when x is 0, you can see you're going to get minus 2 where it crosses the y-axis, so it's clearly going to be 2 units down here. Okay, well I hope that's given you an idea then how to go about solving that problem.